Hi, my name is Ashley and today I'll be showing you a foam rolling stretch routine. All you need is a foam roller of any size and optional a little ball. So let's get started. If you're not in a place where you can do this video with me right now, go ahead and save this video to your watch later and join me whenever you can. All right guys, let's get started with uh, rolling out our legs. We're gonna go all the way up into our hips and then we'll end with our back. This is amazing to do after some weightlifting or any heavy exercise. It's very good to have a little foam roller and I have the one that has some ridges on it but you can always just have the plain one, anything works. So I'm gonna come to the side of my mat and I'm just gonna begin rolling out from my calves all the way up my hamstrings. So ideally, you just wanna use your body weight to help you out with this. I'm gonna start here, and you can do one at a time. The more body weight you press into it, the more that it's going to roll out that muscle. So let's say my calf was really sensitive and tight. I can put this foot on the floor just to gauge how much pressure I'm using on the foam roller. If I put two on here, it's, it's gentle, but if I wanna get deeper into it, I'm gonna do one leg at a time. And if you want to max out how deep you're rolling, I will even put my foot on top just to add some pressure to really get into it. And if it's hurting too much, be really gentle. I think having both is the most gentle or putting your foot down to gauge the pressure. Switching sides, let's go to this calf. It even hits the Achilles too, which feels really nice. Again, for uh, control of the pressure, I'm pressing with the foot that's on the ground just to gauge how much I'm pressing in. And you can also press down with the leg that's on the foam roller to get an extra stretch, press down. Nice, you guys. Now I'm going to move the foam roller to the top of my hamstrings and I'm gonna do the same. For this one, I do like to do two legs at a time because usually my hamstrings can be very sensitive. But you can also do this with just one leg at a time and gauge the pressure. This tends to be a really sensitive spot if you had been doing a lot of deadlifts, any leg workout really, so be gentle. You can always put more pressure into this foot just to make it a little softer on your muscles. Nice. Switching sides, starting in the top and rolling. Again, you can also press down with your leg if you wanna get a deeper um, roll out of this. You can press down with the leg that's on the foam roller. And it's just like you're giving yourself a little massage with this tool. Nice, you guys. All right, finally, if you've been doing all the squats, I'm gonna start at the top of my hamstrings again, but I'm gonna go ahead and roll back. And this time it's almost like you're in the crab position here. And this time your hands and your feet can kind of help you gauge how much pressure you're putting. Or you can take one foot off if you'd like to get a little bit deeper. And of course switch so that you're getting both sides evenly. Stretching and rolling out is essential so that you don't end up a 
stiff bulk of muscle. You want to stay long, lean, and able to still move around, have mobility as well as that strength. So, all right, you guys. A big part that can get tight is right here on the sides of the leg. So I'm going to go ahead and roll that out as well. Bringing my foam roller to the front of my mat. And we're going to go like this. My back leg will be bent, pressing into the floor just to hold me up and my hands will also be guiding me. So I'm just going to roll out. I'm going to scoot back just to make sure you can see me. Roll out the side. This one is a little bit more awkward because you do have to hold yourself up, but ooh, this one always needs the most rolling out. Ugh, no one thinks about the side of the leg, but ugh, that one is tight. And again, I'm pressing with my hands so that I'm not going too deep into that muscle. Just enough pressure. And relax. Let's go second side. And again, back leg bent, hands holding me up, pressing into the side. Try to get as side as possible so you're hitting that side of the leg. Breathe into it, especially if you're sore at the moment you're doing this, it's gonna hurt a lot and that's normal. So if this hurts a lot, just know, breathe into it. It's gonna be okay, it's not bad. You won't get injured by a foam roller unless maybe you try and step on it. <laughs> All right, one thing I do like to focus on is also the back of the knee. I know a lot of people get injuries in the back of the knee from sports and sprinting and just anything, even dance. So <laughs> I like to gently hit the back of the knees as well. Add a little bit more pressure going one leg at a time. And second side. Nice. Moving on to my favorite part is rolling out my back. And I even like to start just by almost how I do with the yoga blocks. I put the foam roller at the top of my sit bones and I just rest here for a second. And you can even open up your hips and keep it right here. Let gravity do the trick and hold it for a few seconds. Again, you can do this one with a yoga block or even just stack up some pillows. It's really nice to just relax your back, open up your hips. You can add a little bit of pressure with your hands to open up your hips further, but this is really just meant to be kind of like a relaxing, let gravity do the trick type pose. You can do this while watching TV, on the phone with a friend. All right, bring the knees together. While we're here, you can start to gently roll out that lower back. And this one again is a little bit more awkward, but you can always come up to your elbows and just gently roll out that sit bone to lower back. You can just walk it out with your elbows. The lower back I know is super tight on some people. So even shifting to one side, if one side is a little bit more sore than the other, shifting here, I just kind of adjust my arms. This one's lifting me up. And again, just be gentle with yourself. That's why I always make sure that I have control with how much pressure I'm putting. Nice, you guys. You can even rock side to side to kind of massage out that lower back. Especially if you have a foam roller like this that has ridges, it kind of helps massage it out. Nice. Coming down, I'm going to go into the upper back. 
here. And I kind of let my arms cross to get a deeper stretch. And I use my feet this time to help roll me. You can also put your hands here or put them in if you wanna get kind of into the shoulder blades. Just play with the position. See what works best for you. I think right now for me, kind of having the elbows in helps with massaging out those shoulder blades. And when I do, I add more pressure by kind of lifting my chest a little bit more to add pressure in that upper back. Just like that. Nice, you guys. All right. You can also use foam rollers if you ever want to kind of heighten your flexibility. Sometimes I will put it underneath to get an extra stretch here. So basically one leg in, one leg out. It just helps you get on like an overstretch that you wouldn't get if it was just on the floor. Even in the splits, if you want to achieve an over split, you can use the foam roller to give you an extra lift in the front. Nice, second side. One leg in, one leg out. And rest it over. This definitely helps um, achieve extra stretch without just pulling in with your arms all the time. It kind of brings your leg closer to you, so it's stretching from both directions. Nice, you guys. Moving on, if you have a small ball, whether it's your pet's ball, a tennis ball, anything, I like one that's a little bit softer, but depending on how big the knots are in your back and your feet, you can go for a little bit harder of a ball. So it really depends on your pain tolerance or how hard you want to get those muscles. Cause if it's a softer ball, it's going to be a little more forgiving when you're rolling out with it versus a hard ball. So up to you, this one's, um, this one's softer. So it's not too crazy, but this is for your knots. If you have really big bumps in your back, which you usually tend to come by your shoulder blades, you can put this kind of as like a pressure point. So for example, if I have a knot on either side of my shoulder blade, I'm just gonna roll on it just like I did with my foam roller, but it's more of like a, I said, precise pinpoint of where you're feeling pain and you can just gently roll on it, find where it is, be soft with this one. Ooh, but this one definitely gives a more pressure pointed, stronger release than a foam roller would. So not for everyone, but if you definitely have more chronic pain in your back and your shoulders, this is really good to do. You just have to breathe into it because it's definitely more intense than a foam roller. So just gently move around with it. Or if you really want that knot to release, you can just kind of hold it. Ooh. I'll just go to the second side to make sure that I'm even because that really does the trick. If you're in pain, if you have a knot in your back, but no one to give you a little rub down, just get yourself a tennis ball, your dog's little play ball, anything. And this will definitely, definitely roll it out. Ooh. Again, if it's painful, it's okay. It's not a bad pain. <laughs> nice, you guys. Another way to do this, especially if you're at a desk all day, you have a desk job and you realize that your shoulders are creeping up and they're a little bit tense, go ahead and take your hand to put the pressure right there in your shoulder and you can just roll it right here. And you just use your hand to press into your shoulder.
And this one can be done with a little bit harder of a ball because your hand controls the pressure, not your whole body weight laying on it like your back did. So anything will do. And it's a great way to give yourself a little self massage. Make sure those shoulders are relaxed if you're sitting all day, if you have tension there. This can even be done on the neck. You can roll it out as so. And again, your hand is just what's kind of managing the pressure on this. For the shoulder, I like to use the opposite hand. This is something that's great to keep on your desk and in between your meetings or anything, you could just grab a ball and make sure that you're not holding tension or stress in places you shouldn't be. Other side of the neck, base of the head, super easy. Last but not least, this is amazing for your feet and your arches. If you don't sit at a desk, you have to stand on your feet all day, walk around. You can either stand on it or you can just kneel on it. I'm going to put it right here on my arch and that also rolls out any knots that you have in your arches. If you're a runner, especially, we just stand on our feet all day. So this is just good for you to do like all the time, every day to make sure you're giving love to your feet. Nice, you guys, second side. And again, you can gauge how much pressure that you're using by I have my hands on both sides. And of course, how much pressure you're putting um, kind of standing up onto it. You can also do this while standing up if you prefer that. I think that might be a little bit more intense of a rollout if you're standing up. So up to you. Nice, you guys. That is a ways that you could just roll out your muscles and relax very quickly. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to download our app, Yoga Plus, for more. And check out more videos in my series. I'll see you then. Introducing Yoga Plus. Offering a free series every month with over 300 different videos. Take control of your health. Work out anytime, anywhere. Yoga Plus. Download now for free.